Lucas and Carolina were an adventurous couple who enjoyed exploring trails in unknown places. This time, they chose a trail that led to a dense forest, known for its legends of mysteries and hauntings. The forest was dense and dark, with tall, ancient trees that formed a green canopy that completely covered the sky. The vegetation grew so densely that there was barely enough room for sunlight to penetrate, creating an oppressive and melancholy atmosphere. The branches of the trees intertwined with each other, forming a kind of green maze that could easily confuse unsuspecting visitors. Carnivorous plants and other exotic species grew around them, their sharp leaves ready to capture careless prey. The roots of the trees were exposed on the ground, creating treacherous obstacles for hikers. The ground was covered with a thick layer of moss and dry leaves, making the walk slippery and dangerous. As they advanced along the trail, the silence of the forest was broken only by the sounds of their own footsteps and the distant sound of wild animals. As night fell, the darkness of the forest became even more oppressive and threatening. The trunks of the trees were interspersed with cracks and wounds, creating a sense that the forest was alive and that these trees had suffered from something that left permanent marks on their surface. In some places, the smell of putrefaction hung in the air, indicating the presence of dead or decaying creatures. All this gave the forest a feeling that something was wrong, as if it was hiding dark and dangerous secrets. A feeling that things were not as they should be, that the forest was acting abnormally, as if to warn visitors of the dangers that lurked in its bowels. Despite the warnings from the locals, the two of them ventured out on the trail and entered the forest. Soon, the dense vegetation completely covered the sky, creating a dark and oppressive atmosphere. They walked for hours, hearing only their own footsteps, until a strange noise echoed through the forest. They stopped, but the sound continued, getting closer and closer. Then they saw a shadowy figure moving through the forest, and realized that they were not alone there. They tried to run back along the trail, but got lost on the way and ended up trapped in the forest at night. From that moment on, things got worse and worse. They heard voices whispering in their ears and shadows moving around them. It seemed as if they were being chased by something supernatural. They tried to hold themselves together and fight the fear, but they couldn't escape the clutches of terror. Suddenly they came upon an old abandoned cemetery, hidden among the trees. The tombstones were covered with moss, and the silence of the place was even more frightening than the rest of the forest. They tried to run away, but an evil energy stopped them, causing them to return to the graveyard. That's when the horrors really began. They saw corpses rising from the graves and the bones of the creatures creaking as they approached. They tried to run away, but were surrounded by the creatures who dragged them into an abandoned crypt. Inside, Lucas and Carolina saw even more terrifying scenes of terror. Walls covered in blood and guts, with remains of other victims who were trapped in the forest. They tried to escape again, but were chased by a shadowy figure who led them deep into the forest. When they were finally found by the rescue team, Lucas and Carolina were completely distraught. They were never the same again and spent the rest of their lives in a mental institution, trapped in their own minds tormented by fear and the visions of that dark night in the forest. Matt is a young wheelchair user with brown hair and green eyes. He has a motorized wheelchair that allows him to move around easily. His chair is detailed in black and red, and he treats it with great care, as if it were his best friend. Matt is an outgoing and adventurous young man. He loves reading horror comics and is always looking for new scary stories to read. At night, he likes to explore his quiet little town, visiting abandoned places and looking for exciting adventures. Matt was born with a condition that left him paraplegic from birth. He has always had to face challenges, but this has never stopped him from having a life full of adventure and excitement. He discovered his passion for horror comics as a child and hasn't stopped reading since. Now Matt is determined to explore every corner of his town, discovering new secrets and mysteries. He doesn't care if people see him as different, because to him, his wheelchair is just an extension of his body and he is ready to face any challenge that comes his way. Tremonto is a small, quiet country town where nothing very exciting happens. 
the days go by quietly with the inhabitants going about their daily routines without much change. Matt, however, has always felt that there was something more to discover in his town, something beyond what the eye could see. As the years passed, Matt became increasingly curious and began to explore the city at night when everything was quieter and more mysterious. He would visit abandoned places and look for adventures around every corner, always accompanied by his horror comics. Matt always enjoyed exploring the limits of Tremonto, especially at night. One of his favorite stops was a clearing at the end of town that ended in a deep ravine. There, Matt used to use the flare that belonged to his father, a former military man, to shoot in the direction of the ravine and watch the lights fall below. On one of the nights when Matt was exploring the clearing, something strange happened. As he aimed the flare at the ravine, he noticed a rapid movement in the forest below. As the flare lit up the spot, he saw a strange creature moving towards him. Matt was startled and decided to run away immediately. But the creature was fast and was soon moving closer and closer to him. In a moment of desperation, Matt had the idea to use his motorized chair and turn it towards the creature. He then fired with a new flare, aiming right at the creature's chest. What he saw was shocking. The creature looked like a wolf, but with human features. Matt was perplexed and afraid, not knowing what to do. He watched the creature fall to the ground. Fire surged through its chest and face, the creature roared and then disappeared into the darkness of the forest. Matt went home as fast as he could and decided to forget about it. He went into his room and took a while to fall asleep, but in the end he was tired and went out. The next morning he went downstairs for breakfast and saw his father sitting at the table. When he got closer he saw that part of his father's chest, neck and face were burned. Matt was in shock and his father just smiled at him. I run along the iron platforms that border the burning volcano, feeling my heart beat uncontrollably. Lava flows all around me and the rocks tremble beneath my feet. But it is not only the natural dangers that worry me. Demonic screams resound in the air as these winged, hellish creatures plunge toward me. I turn around, draw my sword, and begin to slash and dodge their claws and fangs. I move quickly, trying to keep my distance while still making aggressive advances towards them. The smell of sulfur and toxic gases fills my lungs as I run toward the top of the volcano. The air is hot and stifling, but I can't stop. Each time I pause, the infernal creatures come dangerously close, trying to surround me. Suddenly, I feel a sinister presence watching me. I look up and see a hellish creature with gigantic wings and sharp claws approaching. I begin to slash and dodge its claws and fangs. I move quickly, trying to keep my distance while still making aggressive advances towards it. But the creature hits me with a sharp blow, throwing me backwards. I fall to the ground, feeling my sword slip from my hand. The smell of sulfur and toxic fumes fill my lungs as I try to get up, but the infernal creature gives me no respite, it approaches again. I turn, rolling to the side, narrowly avoiding her blow. My hand finds my sword. I grab it again and stand up. I take a deep breath and advance again against the creature, attacking with my sword. It dodges, but I hit it in its flank, causing it to scream in pain. I continue to fight the demonic creatures that come my way. Some are small and easy to kill, while others are large and powerful. I take hits and cuts, but I keep moving forward, knowing that the only way to escape is to get to the top of the volcano. I continue to run across the platform, feeling my energy slowly depleting. My legs are tired, my arms ache, and my heart feels like it is about to explode in my chest. Suddenly, a hellish creature leaps toward the platform I am standing on, its eyes glowing with an evil glare. I prepare to fight it, but instead it rushes toward the platform itself, causing it to swing violently. I try to balance myself, but it is too late. One side of the platform breaks off and begins to fall toward the hot lava below. I roll to the edge, but manage to hold on with one hand, avoiding the sure fall. My fingers slip on the edge, my heart racing with the fear of falling into the lava. I concentrate on holding on tight, 
but the pain in my arms is almost unbearable. I try to recover from the fright, taking a deep breath and looking at the platform in front of me. But suddenly I feel my fingers slip and my body fall toward the hot lava below. I scream in desperation, prepared to feel the unbearable pain of being burned alive. But the pain never comes. Instead, everything around me goes dark. As I sink into the dark and silence, I see letters forming in front of me, a message that says, You are dead. Do you wish to try again? In the background, a voice comes up, angry, saying, Damn, every time I die in the same place at this level. That's enough for today. Suddenly, I no longer exist.